Matt saved my career in 2013. I mean, no one else texted me. Matt was the only one that hit me up like, hey, how can I help? I am sitting down with an old friend, Matt Hafey. Hey, how do you pronounce your last name real quick? I you nailed it. I did? Nailed okay, it. It's good. actually Hafey. It looks like Hefey, but it's Hafey. I mean, fucking, I knew, I know I knew that from back in the day, but you I just it. forgot. And I was like, all right, I think it's Hefey. And that's pretty. It. <laughs> you nailed uh, it. Long time, though, as you said, though, man. When, was, yeah, the, man. when was the last time? Was that like uh, the Mayhem tour or something like that? Mayhem, I think it actually was Mayhem. Uh, it might have, that would have been Mayhem, what, 2015, 16, something like that? Yeah. Man, that was a, a long ago. time ago. Yeah. And the <laughs> first time we ever toured together, it's funny, I just did an interview a second ago. They were talking about the Metallica shows in 2006. That was the first time oh, I think we toured right. together. Oh, six festival runs. Yeah. Yeah. When we were out there in Europe with uh, yep. with with everybody, that, I completely had forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah. They mentioned that today. They're like, so what was it like? I was like, well, it's pretty awesome. I was like, Metallica thought Avenged, Bullet, and Us were the, the three up and coming dudes of the metal scene so it's great to be up there for doing a misfit song together they asked me specifically about the misfit song yeah well and then what was another one we did the misfit song and then we did there was a couple songs that they put, brought us up on stage for i don't know that. that was the only one we were able to make but okay. I, I like the bar setup looks awesome mm. thank looks you really good, uh, yeah uh thanks for being on here in case anyone needs uh needs to know this is matt hafey of trivium and uh, I'm pretty sure if you're tuning in right now, you already knew that. Um, uh, basically, I'm uh, just really excited to have you on, man. I was just listening as as you were uh, about to come on here. I was listening to the new record uh, in the Court of oh, the yes. Dragon. Thank just came so out much. a few days ago, right? Came out on Friday. Yeah. So it's been very, very short. short well, ago. Congratulations on that release, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're super happy with it. It's finally after you know, I can't believe we have 10 records now, uh, which is pretty yeah. insane. Um, records one through seven. We're always like different country liked a different record, different fans liked a different record. People would fight over which one's their favorite ones or which one they thought were good or which ones weren't good. Find yes. the last three. It's like everyone just agrees. Like, all right, we like these three together, which is good. Because there was like factions that said two was the best. It said fourth was the best. Fifth was the best. And now with seven, eight, nine, or sorry, eight, nine, ten. Damn, they're all they're all happy. <laughs> Damn, ten records. That's that's it's insane. A it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. I think we've done seven, if, I'm, if I, my memory serves me well. Um, but it probably doesn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great record, though, man. I was listening Thanks, to man. it. It's like I love that you guys just keep doing what you do. It's just thrashy metal shit, and it's fine. Thank you so rad. much, man. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate I it. I did hear uh, Apollo talking about it on Liquid Metal um, on Sears XM the other oh, day, yeah. and he mentioned that one of the songs I can't remember the the name of uh, which one it was was actually a demo from the last record, or he had demoed it out from the last record, and oh, then you guys. Yeah reimagined it like you came over to his house and worked on the vocals with him on it and uh re-put it back out and i was just wondering is that a common practice have you ever have, or is this the first time you've gone back to an old song that didn't necessarily make the cut for whatever reason on the on the on another record i'm curious actually which one that is like when you said that, i was looking at the track list i wonder which one that is damn i wonder if i wonder if someone <laughs> from uh, yeah I, maybe that's no way back just through but what's I, the one i thought you were going to mention was actually the phalanx so the last song on the record Ooh. we wrote as a track for our fourth record and our fourth record shogun is like one that, that i mentioned the factions like people usually say it's yeah. ascendancy or it's shogun or it's in waves and the shogun fans are, are some of the most intense ones because that's like the really proggy record with like the 13 minute song like all right that's the best record phalanx was written for that record we couldn't figure out how to finish the middle and we basically put it on the back burner. I thought it was me forever. And Paulo mentioned one day, he's like, hey, we should bring the phalanx back. And so we brought the phalanx back and actually finally came up with that middle section. And then there it was. We did that one other time with the song Silence of the Snow, which is actually our seventh record. That was also a song written for the fourth record that we couldn't figure out the middle and then figured it out before then. Wow. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know twice. that we've ever done that. I think we've brought in that like ideas from songs that didn't yeah. make the record but i don't know that we've actually taken a whole song that didn't make the record and reimagine it like that yeah because it, it wasn't like it was like a b-sider thing but we just could not yeah. figure out how to finish i remember phalanx we actually took the middle section of that song and put it in a different shogun song a song called torn between Sil and charybdis man i like song i like long song titles don't i seriously <laughs> well i was looking at the album title too like also by the way the artwork is is badass for uh, in the court of the dragon thank and you i also like if you bring it up on your phone it it shows like it has like movement like dust settling or something like that did you notice that I didn't notice that on. Does it have it on Spotify or something? On uh, Apple. 
Holy cow. I got to check that out. I didn't know we have that. That's amazing. It's really cool. Really... It almost looks like some sort of like NFT thing or something. Holy cow. That's amazing. Cover. Uh, Damn, I, I, I didn't know that. At, I was like, either that or I was really hungover this morning when I was looking <laughs> at it. I don't know. <laughs> we just did a we just did a beer party release on what was it Saturday night and man yeah it's like that many drinks this like this day and age I think once you're like a dad now that, now that I'm a dad like it hurts yeah. ten times more and then our our kids woke up super early but so the the painting of that record actually so we knew the stuff we had coming around was pretty epic and I said to myself and to the guys like I wish someone like Caravaggio was still alive and I want to find one of those 1700s painters and so I scoured the internet and found this one painter named Matthew out of out of France and he is as good as the 1700s dudes we hit him up gave him the concept gave him the title I don't even think we showed him any music he didn't really know our band didn't really know any metal the second draft he had was that and we're like wow. this is perfect so it spent I think he spent about four months painting this thing, had it made, uh, had it ornately framed, sent to the UK for photos and stuff, then sent to Birmingham for a beer like release party where that painting was just there. People yeah, I saw up. that on your, I saw that on your Instagram. That Why are you, where are you at in the world right now? <laughs> I'm back in, back in, in Florida at home, but we were actually in Mount you were Pleasant. In, you were in UK though on Saturday? No. So that was in Orlando. We decided oh, to do another one. Yeah. So we try to make it like this multiple world hit at the same time. Um, but we did a, a party where the original painting was actually there. We did a uh, beer collaboration with Dig Brew in Birmingham in like the birthplace of heavy metal. And that had three of my favorite bands in the world play it. So we had Malevolence, Silosis, and Tesseract all play that like basically oh, wow. had paintings unveiling. Um, we zoomed in from Mount Pleasant, Michigan off the Megadeth tour. So we were actually at a casino that day, zooming in. Um, it was uh, hate, go. five to 10,000 people a night, which is pretty crazy for metal. Pretty yeah. crazy for hate breed trivium lamb of god megadeth didn't miss one show uh didn't miss anything nice. um we actually did have our tour manager slash monitor guy contracted breakthrough covid like show three oh. and we're like before we knew for sure we're like he looks a little sick dropped him off at a hotel all took our tests drove to the venue took our tests again walked out of the bus would like check it out we're all good so we, we basically did two weeks of tour without a tour manager monitor guy and we just like Whoa. freaking DIY TM and monitor. That's like going back to the van days, right Dude, there. Dude, it man. sucked. It sucked. Like we had to be double masked, had to like stay further away. Cause like the, the tour was already operating under like a pretty intense bubble. Yeah. Um, my wife and I both had breakthrough be, like months before the tour. So I couldn't even, I can't even currently contract it again, at least for another. I don't know what the precedent is. I think it's like three or four months. Yeah, uh, whatever like that. it is, there it's there's new information. It's changing. Every day, yeah, exactly. I feel like it. So as I told Randy and he agreed, like I am the safest person to open mouth kiss on this entire tour. And he kept saying, he's like, Man, I wish he's, so did he's you like, guys kiss then or what? I told him he should have he should have when I had it. Like he said that he was tempted to fly down. Him and Mark wanted to fly down when was I it had like chicken pox when we were kids. You might I think so. it get it, get yeah. it, get it over with. Well, some uh, an unvaccinated coworker got it to my wife, who was vaccinated. She gave it to our kids, who they're two and a half, so they couldn't get it. And then my son sneezed in my face like four times that day. I was like, "Man, if he had this, I would have it." The next day, I woke up, was like, "Yep, I got it." <laughs> <laughs> That's why. So it, yeah, it needs that like intermediary. So Randy was like, "I should have wrestled with your kids." I was like, "Yes, you should have, and you would have gotten it." <laughs> what a great lineup, though. I didn't realize that, that everybody was on that on that tour that you just yeah, mentioned. I mean, it was so it makes fun, perfect man. sense to me when I hear Trivium playing with Megadeth though, because I was listening to, you know, your guys' uh, discography over the last week. And I was like, they're kind of like the new Megadeth in a lot of ways. Thanks, like it's just like really, really rad, intricate rhythms that, you know, are, it's, it's just a really cool throwback to some thrash metal. And I think it's Thank pretty you very much, cool man. you guys are still doing that. Thank you. Yeah, it's a blast, man. That, that tour was the most fun. I think it was like the most fun US tour ever besides like, we we're only able to hang out with our bus. So it was like us outside with just our dudes. And, but it was pretty right. great. Paulo, Alex and I all brought our laptops out, played Call of Duty every day if we weren't watching, watching the bands. So three, the, all three of those bands are three of our favorite bands, Hate Breed, Lamb of God, and Megadeth. So it was great. Mm -hmm. Great bands to tour with. Um, the days off is like everyone knows I love food. That was tricky. It was, we made sure every meal was outdoors. So I had to find really good stuff that also had outdoor seating. So we made it through. I mean, we played every precaution because we're like, we're not missing a damn show because we saw right. a lot of tours. Like they would it's have tough, like a man. crew member, or a band guy, and they would shut it down for one to 14 days. And we're like, these big bands can afford that. We can't, we cannot right. miss a show. So thankfully all those extensive, annoying protocols that we did didn't miss one. Out. I think well, that was a record. A lot of the bands. I mean, I was, I was texting with Robert Trujillo the other day. Um, I was going to possibly go out to Aftershock in Sacramento. 
And uh, I was just texting with him and I was like, would I get a chance to see you say hi or anything like that? He's all, no, man, we're in like a tight bubble. Like, so then I kind of decided, I was like, I don't, I don't want to go back to my first like festival and hang out with all my friends and not really be able to hang out with my friends. Yeah. Like, like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, we did not fest and that was really like, even like our, our tour was, I, I felt like our tour had, had a good level. Then theirs was like another level of security. Like they like had a separate compound for our tour and then for not fest itself. Cause we were all out there and they weren't like the other 10 or 15 bands. I thought that was pretty interesting that they, that they put a tour kind of segregated off. I thought that was an interesting idea, like for a festival. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're trying to, it, it's, things just got back, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, it's going to be tri- a lot of trials uh, of, of what, what protocols should be, but um, exactly. Yeah. Like but, the big um, thing with me, like early on, I was always like, I'm never going to think of this any other way. Like, I'm not going to think mm-hmm. this is not a political thing. This is just a virus. Like I'm right. just going to think of it like with my kids, you know, you think about the amount of vaccinations, like children have to get hepatitis and there's a freaking chicken pox vaccine. I would have loved to have gotten that to not have chicken Did pox. They have as a kid. That? Oh man. Yeah. Like they that. didn't have it when I was a kid. Yeah. So that one's, that one's mm-hmm. new. Our kids got that. So they'll never have to have chicken pox. Um, mine wasn't bad, you know, being like, how old do they have to be? Whatever. I've got a four and a, I've got a four and a half year old son. I think you can get that like now. I think ours had it at a little under two years old. Maybe he already had it. I mean, yeah, I, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I'm a bad dad. I don't know what they, they just shoot him up with shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. Ours are like super, superhuman now. It seems like, well, I was like, I remember my dad getting chicken pox when I was like 12 or so. And I just remember oh, wow. seeing him in the pick, like the push up position next to his bed, puking into a bucket. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> like, I swear in my memory, he was like doing a push up. Um, yeah. Anyway, That'd I digress. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did mention days off and being a, being a bit of a foodie and you guys did, did your, uh, album and art launch at a beer uh uh beer garden or beer festival what, what was what, tell me a little bit more about that and why I, I think there was a beer that went hand in hand with that artwork right yep. and yep so we did the one in the uk that beer. we were super jealous about missing that one and thankfully one of our favorite beer bars in the country red light red light there in orlando they like have some of the coolest beer uh the owner's a really good friend of ours who brews all his own stuff. We did the last two launches there. We actually just did the launch here as well. So it was a nice five, 10 minute ish drive and just had a bunch of people from Orlando come out. We had Black Magic Pizza there. It was an amazing local pizza place. It was just hundreds of Trivium supporters came out. We just ate pizza and drank beer in the parking lot. It was awesome. I love it. It was like it. a great time. Dude, I mean, it was <laughs> so fun. It was so fun. Especially yeah. because the last tour, we didn't really hang out with anyone. There weren't any meet and greets. We didn't really leave backstage. And this time we're like, you know what? We're home good to go let's let's just all hang out and everyone had yeah, an amazing time how long are you going to be home for before i mean you did, as you said the album just came out so i imagine there's a follow follow-up tour yeah um, we decided to do. we wanted to do one crazy small club show that we're doing this thursday we're doing a live stream twitch show this sunday uh we have a european slash uk run coming up it's trivium and heaven shall burn Fit for an autopsy and tesseract the only thing is like every country has such different regulations and restrictions right now so I've been telling everyone, like, we're still, the plan is still that it's happening, but we don't really know yet. <laughs> like, we're preparing yeah. for it. Worst case, a tour that size, it just gets moved. Like, it right. gets shifted. Like, it won't go away. It just gets moved. Um, speaking of touring, like, I was just talking with Matt a couple months ago. I was like, dude, when are we going to tour together? We all need to do a proper tour together. Dude, that you know, it's funny. I would, I was, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Because uh, I was thinking about it the other day, just randomly. I was like. You you remember when uh, when Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax did their big four? Yeah, I mean, who in our um, uh, what, timeline, who would be like our big four? You know, what I mean, I, yeah, I would definitely put question. you there. I'd put us in there. We need two other guys, and we could go out and do like a really cool like That'd just be from freaking our freaking insane man. Our generation, you know, our that generation of metal. You know, it would be. I, I mean, I think Metallica kind of called it. You guys, Bullet, us, and then the fourth. I don't know who the fourth would be. Yeah. But I think that would be freaking arenas. We got to figure, we gotta figure that out. Yeah, yes. we need to figure that out. I, I think, think that would be a fun one. Yes, that would be insane. That would be absolutely insane. I would love that. One day. But you did mention a little bit of Twitch, too. It's like since the last time I saw you, Twitch came out and like you were like one of the first guys to go on there um, from a band and just do your thing over there. I've seen a little bit of it, but I'm 
I'm I'm pretty old school, man. I don't really get Twitch all that well. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's awesome is like I, I when I first started, it, it's it was like a live streaming platform for video games. That's where like Ninja right. got big. But nowadays, you could do absolutely anything that you love with a camera on and chat to people. Like I think you could even be filming your your podcast with your guests on stream. Like go on live a little before, talk to your chat, get some questions from them, do the whole segment, and then kind of do a wrap up with them. But the main yeah. thing is like viewer viewers and host being able to speak in that one-to-one, like one-on-one kind of conversation thing. Right, right. Um, but it's, it's amazing. I love it, man. Um, jumped in about four and a half years ago. And it was about four years ago where I started the schedule of it's five days a week, two times a day off tour and seven days a week on tour. But you have to like, you know, you love doing your podcast. So I, I would yeah. s- stream that and then put the finals on, you know, the podcast plats. And then we've been talking, we've been kicking around that idea for a while. Me and the team over here at Drinks with Johnny. So it, it's probably going to happen. I just, I want to make sure I know, I want to go over there and know what I'm doing and not just like plop in like I did yeah. with this show. <laughs> yeah. No, but the key I'm is like, like the... I want to start doing this. So I'm just going <laughs> to fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's essentially what I did here. But the key definitely is like what's hard during a podcast is like you want to have the conversation between the two, but the viewers, yeah. like just chatting the viewers before and after, I think would be the, would be the key. And that's what I love because like mm-hmm. 75 to 90% of the time of me on my stream is me playing Trivium songs for Trivium fans. That's like the main thing, but you could do anything. Like I was telling Randy from Lamb of God about it because we stream all of our shows from that backpack thing I bring out. Out. and uh he was like well what would i do on it i was like you're a photographer you should be having that backpack strapped to yourself or set it up while you're doing shoots and talk about how you frame shots and what you do with that like it's really whatever you love whatever you like to do i just pop in the camera on like it's yeah. it's saved me because matt and i have the same warm-up and only a couple other people will understand how long the warm-up is that Matt and I have to do and how specific <laughs> and the yeah. conditions in which they apply. So thankfully for me, instead of being lonely kind of and like having an all day this, job, right? I mean, it is before the show. It's I, I know Matt. I mean, I, I know because I've, I've lived next to the guy doing it for the last three yep. years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So me, like my, my formula, I think he might be three to eight hours before the show. I'm five hours. The, the amount of time I do before show and I got right. the full hour. Now I can just pop on the camera, talk to chat. Like, hey, what song should I do now? What scale should I do? And just, it's less lonely and less yeah, just you, like sitting there. <laughs> that's amazing. You so you do your warm ups with the chat. That's pretty cool. Every warm up, every sound check, every show. Um, the warm ups can be scary because, like, when you I first started guts, doing, man. I don't know if I if I could do that because <laughs> my voice would pop sometimes. I mean, today I was trying to do the whole record kind of with like a light warm up, and my voice is squeaking and cracking. But you just it it almost helps shed away all that. Now I don't mind doing that on stage. Not mm-hmm. that we allow that stuff to happen, the mistakes and stuff, right. but yeah. it's a blast. It's kind of the stuff that I was going to do anyway. I'd rather have friends there is the way I think of it. Yeah. Are you, are, so I see a, a little reflection of your screen in the back there. Uh, are you on Twitch right now? What, what are you doing? Yeah. So I've got this entire setup. <laughs> this is, this is my zoom like conference in call thing. Uh-huh. I've got a DSLR camera here and then I've got a, a fret camera here and then a picking camera here. Um, I've got the stream rig here, which is what, these two monitors. I have your face on one monitor, the stream rig here, and then here's like all the, the music stuff. So it's it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, man. But it looks like it looks very it looks like organized chaos. Um, I saw I saw the the setup um, on your again on your Instagram. I saw Thanks, you taking man. pictures of it, and I was like, yeah, this is a, this is pretty pretty intricate. It's 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 it is it's intense. And there were no guides when I started. Like I was like, how do I stream music on here? Everyone's like, uh, we can only show you how to stream Fortnite. But I got the idea of the double setup from Fortnite streamers because I was when I first got into it, I got really heavily into playing Fortnite. I was actually com- I actually competed in one of like the world tournaments, and Ninja actually killed me. Ninja's the one that like blew Twitch yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, I uh, heard about. I know I've heard of, I've heard the name. Matt, you as you know, Matt's more of the gamer in our band mm-hmm. too. And uh, yeah. I, but I, I I actually tried to play with my nephews some other game just yesterday. They were showing me, and they're like they're they're seven and nine years old, and they were just demolishing me. I was like, it's, I don't even know what I'm doing here. It's incredible, <laughs> like the growth rate, like people get like um we I, I play with I play games with a lot of people from my channel. I remember when a new game came out, Valorant. We all started at the same time, and I thought everyone I was just assume everyone's around my age. And I asked some people in our crew, I was like, Hey, how, how old are you by chance? And he's like, Ah, oh, seventeen. And I was like, oh, damn, you're really young, first of all. But then I saw, like, we both started at the same time. And the growth rate was like that because he was younger. Yeah. They've got the younger brains, the younger reflexes. It really is right. like, you know, 14 to 24 is like peak esports brain. And it, it is really interesting to see how quick, uh, how quickly they can make that happen or be able to meet all these new people from the channel that people that have been building PC since they were eight. 
And yeah. it's like, man, I can't even like, I don't even like restringing my guitar, like in your building PCs. <laughs> yeah, man. That's such a pain in the ass when you're out, when you're at home and you have to do your own stringing. It's like, I'm like, man, that's why I always like when I'm just demoing stuff, it's all on like such old strings until I finally same, go. I'm same. like, all right, fine. Fuck it. I'll do it. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it so much. I've got a couple of acoustics. Just strings are broken off. I'm like, I'm not using those. <laughs> we definitely sound like a couple of dicks though. You do realize yeah. that what we're saying. That, oh, yeah. like, all these kids at home who just want to play and do what yep. we do. And we're just like, like we need our it's... techs over here. Get over <laughs> here. Tech, <laughs> tech, my stuff, clean my stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, as we're looking in the background here, um, what is the significance of some of these posters here? Um, so that's the Black Crusade tour. That's uh, Machine Head and Tribune. We did a co-headline across the UK and Europe in like 2006 or 2007. It's Tribune yeah. Machine Head, uh, Tribune Machine Head, Dragon Force, Arch Enemy, and Shadows Fall. It was like a massive freaking awesome tour. There's the Unholy Alliance great, great tour. Lineup. Uh, in the UK, Unholy Alliance was us and Slayer co-headline. Europe, they headlined. It was us and Slayer, Mastodon, and Amon. I have an angry, angry kid right there. So <laughs> I heard him. I was like, yeah. how old is he? Or how old? you have twins, right? Yeah, they're both three. Let me check on him. I'm sure he's good. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do your thing, man. All right. This is real life shit right here. I guess now would be a time. I could tell you guys to head over to drinkswithjohnny.com. I don't know why. Oh, no, there's a lot of cool stuff there, actually. And uh, extra oh, stuff. And He's like super. He's almost three uh but he can oh, climb yeah. like a five-year-old so my good friend <laughs> bought him a freaking climbing gym for five to ten year olds but wow. he's been climbing on it since he was like one and a half so he's super physical and he does he's a daredevil always doing crazy stuff and um he never gets hurt doing the dangerous stuff like picking up concrete blocks or like he can drag a kettlebell or a sandbag but yesterday he was wow. running or we like you need to go to the bathroom before we leave he ran tripped on absolutely nothing hit his face in the couch the soft part of the couch and split this whole part of his face oh, no. so we thought we had to take him to the hospital but we yeah. didn't so we bandaged up took care of it and he's still acting like a madman and just hit it so that's why he's really mad <laughs> yeah it's uh, i know i know that sound all too well <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's crazy how old are your kids so, do you have uh, kids i have one i have yeah. one he's four and a half um, yeah he's gonna be five actually i just keep saying four and a half but he's gonna be five in february yeah um He's awesome. He's, he's, he's such a rad little dude. He's got a, as you know, they, they got their own personalities, man. When you start to learn it and start to see it, it's just so cool. And, it uh, really is. And yeah. like the, the stuff that they already have from parents is crazy. Like, do do you see a lot of similarities between like your personality traits and your partner's personality traits? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. thousand percent. Like there's always, there's, you know, we always look at each other as like, that's you. And when, like, when he, when he does something that emulates my wife, I'm like, you know, he got that from you, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. My wife was like, so Akira, he's like very specific, doesn't like to really be alone, needs things in his exact regiment, nothing to get a place. I'm like, mm, sorry, dude. <laughs> he lets <laughs> all of that from me. And it's just, yeah. Yeah, but I, it's, I'm it's, seeing that. I'm seeing that with everything yeah. in its place in your studio there. Yes. Yes. It's a little it's a little messier than it should be, but it's it's getting there. It's getting there. Wow! If that's messy, like you should see my writing studio. It is. Yeah. <laughs> There's shit everywhere. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mess. It's, I'm the guy that brings way too much stuff on tour, but I I, I make sure I. Every, if anyone's ever like, hey, can I help with that? I don't let them help me. It's like, no, I brought this out. I need to punish myself, and it's all perfectly organized. Wow. So yeah, it was weird getting back on tour after being able to just like have everything just so in my house. But the, this last one was good. <laughs> Man, so what else has been going here? You got a kids, uh, you're 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 a Twitch streamer now, you got the new album, you guys are getting back out on the road. What else has been going on in your life think, like uh, since uh, since 2016 when we last saw each other? Been doing fun collabs. Like I've got like a separate side project. Just, it's just Matthew K. Hafey for the DSPs, but I did a song with Richard Marks. I hit him up oh. one day. I was like, I was like, hey man, let's do a collab. And he's like, That's I'm in. Rad. Uh, and we did right here waiting, but I made a metal version that he actually sang on. So he did all the lead vocals in the metal version of his song. So that came out, which is pretty <laughs> sick. Did a That's collab with really uh, cool. Yeah, thanks. Did a collab with Mike Shinoda. Um, I sent him this super heavy, like eight string, like modern metal song, and he totally turned it around and made it something entirely different. So little things like that. Um, did some songs like off the, the show from the Viking, uh, like the main one of the themes from Vikings, like that kind of fun stuff. I'm working on some like Irish traditional songs now because. As I'm 50% Japanese, I just found I'm like 47% Irish. So I was like, I want to learn more about this side. Okay. Got my black metal records coming out in April. It's called Ibaraki. It's Japanese folklore stories. It's kind of like what a lot of bands have done with like Norse mythology, but it's the Japanese mythologies. And the Whoa. music's like, it's like kind of rooted in black metal, but there's a lot of Japanese traditional instruments on it. I sing in Japanese a little bit and it's pretty proggy and weird. 
and this is just like a solo stuff mm -hmm. solo project that's cool yep. man i didn't know you're doing solo stuff now yeah it's uh that that black metal record i've been working working on it for about 12 years just very very <laughs> slowly well you um, know you have it you have that other gig that you need to focus yeah on too. the trivium thing takes a minute um <laughs> but yeah i just keep the days super packed with like the streaming schedules are there and then everything in between is just you know obviously kids come first and then still working it i've been doing brazilian jiu-jitsu in a tent in my backyard with my main training partner for the last 19 months um because we've just been keeping it safe and just going back there it's been going good how long and, have you been doing that now because I, I i vaguely remember you were doing that stuff out on the road too yeah right? i'm about nine years in uh this march i'll be nine years in but it's interesting because like if the pandemic wouldn't have happened if the pandemic didn't happen and i was able to keep the normal routine i would have been a black belt by now however i feel like i'm much better now having just done individual practice with my main training partner and mm -hmm. being a little further behind as far as like the belt grade goes so um, i'm really into in, in brazilian jiu-jitsu there's all different attacks and stuff but i'm really into the super dark arts which is like the leg attacks for some reason they consider that the dirtiest stuff but that's the oh. stuff i'm super into and he's my main training partner is like a, a leg leg destroyer so we've been working on that a lot too wow <laughs> What, yeah. what level are you at now? Uh, brown belt two stripe. Wow. Yeah. So it would have been would have been black if this stuff didn't happen, but that's all right. Yeah, it's, it happens. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just add it to the pile. But yeah, yeah, just just mostly the stream, mostly the band. Um, we just got a, a cool HQ. Trivium did. It's an airplane hangar that we're turning into. We've got like a live streaming area, a stage area, writing area, studio, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, all that stuff. And oh, very cool. Did yeah. you, and uh, that's is that where you guys filmed the uh, the music video? For? Yeah, so we did Feast and Phalanx there. Okay. And um, we're just slowly transforming. That's where we're gonna do this Twitch live stream show. I think that one's gonna be upstairs, and then downstairs eventually we'll do like if we if we decide to do another like pay per view show. We only did one of those, we, um, which actually helped fund the hangar. Yeah, uh, but if we do any more of those, we'll film those in the main space of the hangar. And we're talking about doing something fun. Like, did you guys rent? Are you guys renting the hangar, or did we you thankfully buy it? Buy it. Yeah, oh, cool. bought it off um Ashley's cousin. We were we were sick of renting a practice place. We're like, let's buy something. And I looked up mm -hmm. commercial, industrial, residential, and um, I saw this converted airplane hangar that was an Airbnb. I mentioned to my mother in law, I was like, man, it's so cool, but it was, it was a little out of our price range. She's like, you know who's selling one? Ashley's cousin. And right next door to the one he was selling is his contracting business. So he's been building the whole thing out for us as well. Oh, so just keep cool. it in the family. Yeah. And it's, we love it. Um, everyone moved down to Orlando as well. Our drummer was from California, but he just moved over here the last year. Paula was in Illinois and he moved down. So we're all about 10 minutes from each other and just keep doing it. Keep, keep working. What is your drummer's name? He, he's, Alex. And how long has he been? How, Alex, how long has he he's been, been in now? since, let me check the record years, uh, 2017. So it would have been right after. Cause I was like, I don't think that's when I was watching the videos uh, earlier today, I was like looking at it. I was like, I don't think I've met that guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. So he's studio drummer for uh, people. For some reason, they, they say that we've had like a million lineup changes. We've only had four drummers, mm -hmm. but everyone acts like it's a lot. They always act like it's 10. Uh, we've had another live guy in between them, but it was four studio guys. But luckily, every time we switched, someone's like, why did you switch? Why did you switch? Why did you switch? Finally, when we switched to Alex, they said, now we get what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. He's like, Actually, he's a shredder, dude. I was listening he's, to, uh, he's, he's nuts, really man. fucking good. He's like 25, 25, 26. He's super young, comes Ooh. from, comes from tech death and slam and stuff like that. We call him the Modesto monster, but he's just this super sweet, insane drummer. But like our stuff is very easy for him, but he also plays with like, he's played with like gospel stuff and like Latin stuff. So it's really cool to have a guy that could do like black metal, death metal, gospel, Latin country. Yeah. It just works out. Someone who could just do it all. Do you guys, yeah. do you guys ever like jam some different genres when you're just sound checking and shit? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, for some reason, Alex and Corey are always playing smooth by Santana. I, I don't know the words though. So I never say a lot. <laughs> specifically <laughs> always playing that song. Oh, he's 20. He's 25. Alex is 25. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did someone just tell you that on the chat? Yes, 25. <laughs> Wait, no, someone says 28. He is not 25. Damn it. <laughs> so he's 20, he's somewhere between 25 and 20. He's 28 now. Okay, we met him. He's, he's in his 20s. He's yes. young to me. He's, he's a young 20s. man. He's a young man. <laughs> and uh, everyone just had kids too. Uh, Apollo's got now a three month old. Alex has a three month oh, nice. old. Congratulations. And then I've got the two three year olds. And then whenever anyone asks Corey, he still so he says F that. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, I loved, let's go back to some of, uh, you know, some of the stuff that the kids don't really get to talk about or get to hear about rather um, of when you and I uh, and the two bands were touring together those few times and stuff. And 
I remember asking, uh, uh, I think it was, it was either Alex or Corey and they were, we were about to go to Brazil for the first time. And they're like this, no, you're going to love it. It's insane. They're like, and then we got there and it was all that and more. Cause you guys have been there before us. And yeah, so, it's so great, man. Yeah, it's it, great. It, but then like, the only problem is there, I love how passionate they are, but like when I can't leave my hotel room, it kind of bums me out. A little it's bit. tough. <laughs> it is tough. Yeah. The Brazil, oh man, we've only done it once. So it's just the time that we're, we just went and told you guys about it, but going there is actually what got me into jujitsu. Cause I went there and I love the country so much. I was like, I want to do what Brazilians do. And it was basically like soccer or jujitsu. And I always like to pick the harder thing just to try mm-hmm. it out. And I, and I picked it and I hated it. Like I hated jujitsu for the first for the first year, for sure. For the first three years, I didn't like it. And then it finally started kicking in around year five. So it didn't make sense to year five. Kind of like, um, I'd love... Why did you keep going, though? Like, when I, if I don't like I something, know. I just stop. <laughs> I know. It's I just like I just like to torture myself, I guess. Because a lot of the games yeah. I'll play, it's like too hard and, I'm, and I hate it. But I want to get better at it. So I just stick with it. Um, but Brazil, I remember we were, taking to, we were taking to a restaurant there. And I got to try this stuff called feijoada. It's this black beans like stew that has all these different like kind of like the cheap like discarded cuts of meat into it, mm-hmm. and it's a beloved like grandma style dish of Brazil. I remember having that when I had that, and I think I had a caipirinha with that as well. And when I had those two things, like Brazil makes sense. Wait, to me you to actually see. pronounced it perfectly. I can't even pronounce the drink, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. caipirinha. Uh, the, uh, caipirinha. The, uh, yeah, all the Brazilian fans always laugh when I try and say it, and because uh, I like the drink. And I <laughs> yeah. remember, like when I was when I was there, like the first time we had like a little after party with some some of the fans and stuff, and they were making them. And I was like, I don't know what this drink is. Those but are amazing. so good, man. They're they're so <laughs> lethal. The amount of sugar that's in it. There's so much damn sugar. I think it's like two tablespoons of sugar, right. two shots of cachaça, and then like two whole limes per drink. Yeah. Um, the, the only reason why I can say a couple words of Brazilian or excuse me, Brazilian Portuguese correctly is because because of jujitsu. It's like our yeah. main guys. Uh, He's, he speaks Brazilian, uh, Brazilian Portuguese, but then yeah. I'm terrible with Spanish, but I can pronounce por- I can pronounce Polish really well. It, it doesn't make sense. I can do like wow. a co- I can do five to fifteen words, of like fifteen languages, no conversations. But for some reason, Spanish is the worst. Polish might be like my best outside of Japanese. Wow. It's very strange. Do you, do I, don't, speak, I don't know why. Do you speak Japanese fluently? I did as a kid, um, and my mom didn't want me to like kind of feel like an outsider because my dad was deployed from a lot of time when I was a kid. So she kind of pulled back and had me stick to English. So I I did speak Japanese with her, but I sort of lost it. But if I remember, your dad was deployed. I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but this 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 is the part that uh that I I'm very interested in because I I I don't know this about you, but you you say your dad was uh was. Deployed a marine, in the, a marine. marine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my dad was a marine station in Iwakuni. Met my mom there. Uh, she's from Hiroshima. So obviously Hiroshima has an interesting relationship with military and with the states. You know, it was a spot that was bombed. Um, yeah. I remember the story that my dad told me. I never really talked. Actually, I've never mentioned this to anybody besides you. Um, my dad told me that a lot of the people that were in charge were very discouraging of you dating or having a relationship with someone where you're stationed at. So they were super like trying to talk him out of it. And oh. like, they're like, you should not be doing this. I don't know if he, I don't know if I'm, he wants me to say this now, but I guess it's too late. Um, but obviously <laughs> he stuck with it. Um, by the time I was one, they moved away, brought me to San Diego. So we went, you me to San Diego, uh, Coral Springs, Florida, Arlington Heights, Illinois, and then back to Orlando. So I've been in Orlando since about 10 or 11 years old, but they decided to stay and had a, great family and everybody's still together and happy. But um, yeah, he was a Marine for a long time. And my mom was just from Japan. She just picked up and left here. And so my mom's an immigrant um, from Japan. And my dad was kind of on and off with different, different stations while she stayed in San Diego. And eventually we moved back and we just kept moving around for a while. And then I wow. joined Trivium when I was 13. And yeah, he you joined Trivium when you were 13. Why yeah, they I? existed. They existed for two weeks before I joined. Um, there was a guy, <laughs> uh, Brad, a different Matt, Travis, and Jared was the original lineup. Uh, the original guitar player, I think, quit before they ever practiced, even once. I played my eighth grade talent show with No Leaf Clover, and the high school kids asked me, Hey, do you want to try it for our band? I tried it with For Whom the Bell Tolls. I remember I walked in because they're like 16, I'm like 13, and they're like, mm-hmm. What's this little kid gonna do? Played the song perfectly. Yeah, because three years back then, it like really means something. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they let me in. Um, Brad eventually left within like two months or so because he wanted our band to be an industrial band. Like okay. 
Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, Skinny Puppy, Rammstein. Like that was the vibe you I'd wanted for trivia. I'd, 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 I'd want to hear you guys do something like now, that. Now I'm super into that stuff. Like yeah. Rammstein is one of my all time favorites now. Great band. Yeah. Um, he basically said, all right, let's split the songs in half. You guys keep the name. I'm leaving. And then we were three piece and then had in and out of like different bass players, different rhythm guitar players, lead guitar players. Couldn't find a singer. And Travis, because he was bigger than me at the time, he's no longer bigger or scarier than me. He's like, you're going <laughs> to sing. And I was like, okay, I'll sing. So I decided to sing in the band. Didn't really know how to sing. So I just like screamed. And we're like a three piece thrash metal band with screaming for a while. And then started getting into, you know, first we we're into all the same greats that everyone's into, then got into heavily into melodic death metal. Like all the Gothenburg bands, like at the gates and dark tranquility, they yeah, got into nice. extreme metal. And then it was metalcore that really like rounded it all off. And the first metalcore bands I got into were heaven, heaven show burning Caliban from Germany signed to a German metalcore label life force for our first record and gradually kept getting into more. Um, and then we got signed for ascendancy. So that was, that was the path, the quick abbreviated path. Wow. And wait, how old were you when you, uh, when you released your first trivium record? See Ember. Ember, I would have been 2003, 17, 17 or 18. Oh, I and Ascendancy I didn't was how 18. young you guys were when you started all that. Yeah, we started started way young. Um, I think Corey's like two years older than than me. Paulo's one year older than me. Usually we're usually the same age. And then uh, Alex is 28. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Like first band, first job. My first band I tried out for was a pop punk band. And I didn't make it. Like my I try heard, song. I heard about you. You grew up more in the in, pop I punk mean, and ska. Uh, Pop punk and ska. That's yeah. it. Was that before you got into metal, or was yep. it like, oh wow, okay? Yep. Orange County, Florida, like Central Florida, has always been pop punk and ska. Yeah. And so I was in Less Than Jake, Real Big Fish, Blink One Eighty Two. I tried out for a band with Damn It by Blink One Eighty Two, and they never called me back. So I was like, oh. all right, screw guitar, I'm done. Then a kid lent me the Black Album, and I was like, that's the kind of music I want to make. And I just tried to copy those sounds, inadvertently practicing and learning, like not unaware that I was learning and practicing to, to get to this point, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, pop punk was the first love. So sometimes like I'll always go back to pop punk. I'm like, man, this, this is great. It's like I Orange see. County, Florida and Orange County, California are the two capitals of pop yeah. punk. I was just going to um, say, that's where I'm at is Orange County, yep, California. <laughs> yep. Those two, they're the capitals. There's yeah. a lot of similarities between our Orange Counties. Yeah. Um, but uh, shoot, I was going to go with that. What's the, uh, Wait, what's, what's your, what's your favorite pop punk show you've been to? One of my, I think the I can't remember which one was first, but Real Big Fish and Blink-182 are some of the first shows I ever saw. That would have been on Dude Ranch, actually. So Blink was playing House of Blues. And I saw Muse at that same House of Blues before they became a freaking stadium band. Right. I saw them at that the House of Blues Orlando, which was really interesting. I saw you guys at House of Blues, House of Blues Orlando with Mushroom Head. The Mushroom Head tour. Oh you did. yeah, yeah. I was we at that. A, I was did... on the floor for that one, like super really? close. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We did two tours. I I only did one tour with Mushroom Head, but the guys did like a short, an even shorter one before that. But I remember. I love those dudes. Yeah, man. I was in. I was in the. I was probably like four rows back from the front, screaming my head off to every single word, for your guys' set. Oh, for ours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, you guys are. What year would it, What year would have that been? That was Waking the Fallen. Okay, so I was definitely there. Yeah, and I remember on Waking the Fallen on that record, I remember finding a vocal teacher, bringing that record. I was like, help me sing like this guy. And she like couldn't figure out how to get me to sing like Matt. And I remember like, just like, I was like, I need to hit those notes. I could never hit the notes that Matt hit. And then obviously Matt like started training with Ron and got another 20 octaves. So <laughs> yes. yeah, you're, 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 you're with Ron now too, right? Yep. I've been with Ron since Matt set me up with him in 2013. I blew my voice out 2013, had to cancel the rest of the tour, fly home. I thought it was done. And Matt yeah. texted me. He's like, Hey man, I heard about your voice. Is there anything I can do to help? I was like, what did you do? And he's like, here's Ron's number. He, he hooked me up with Ron before. I think it was 2005 or 2006, but I only did one lesson with him. It didn't make sense. Um, and then when I trained with him again in 2013, I was like, all right, this isn't going to make sense for a while. I'm just going to stick with this. Mm -hmm. And it really took like two years, just like jujitsu, just like I said, it took me like two years to make sense of any of it. And only still now is like are the Ron methods really, really kicking in for me. So Matt, Matt saved my career in 2013. I mean, no one else texted me. Matt was the only one that hit me up like, hey, how can I help? Which oh, is pretty that's, insane. That's cool. Yeah, no, yeah. no, Matt's, Matt's a good, a good dude like that. He's always there to help. And yeah, man. It's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, waking that's... sounding those were like the soundtrack to my life when those came out that's that's i was listening to that non-stop and then um city of evil that that was also a game changer because i was like holy shit the growth 
between waking the fallen and city of evil like that's nuts to me like what a lot of you people didn't call did. it growth at the time <laughs> dude i loved it so much well that's that's one of the time that that's one of the things that encouraged me to make the crusade mm-hmm. like i was like man avenge can make this jump and and go to this other realm of like what influenced like it, in my mind, it was like you guys were tapping into like before the you guys were into this level and you're tapping into your heroes, your heroes, mm-hmm. heroes is at least what I heard. Um, so that's why yeah, we gro- definitely we definitely wore our, uh, our our heroes on our sleeves on on that on that record. City of Evil was just a, a molding of Pantera, Metallica and Guns and Roses and, yeah. you know, all the other bands that we grew up loving like that. You know, it was well, I love the proggy we techie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The proggy I mean, well, tech stuff underneath thing. that. Yeah. yeah it was yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah. A little dream theater stuff in there. Yeah. You know, like, that's what we always wanted to do. It was just we didn't have the ability earlier on. We, we started super young, too. I mean, I, I joined the band when I was 17. Yeah. So, I mean, like it, it wasn't until later that we progressed and got better as musicians and songwriters. Like a lot of people think that it was like, oh, they don't realize that they went on the same evolution journey that we did. Like they think it like it was just this conscious decision or whatever. And it's like, no, man, this is just how it uh, naturally went for us. We always wanted to make more songs like that, but we we just didn't have it in our in our wheelhouse yet. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's so cool. Yeah, because like when I when I saw or when I got to hear the difference between waking the city, that's when we had just released Ascendancy. And I was looking at like I thought Ascendancy, I was like, man, this thing is metal as hell. But I kept kind of listening to critics and people mm-hmm. were like, you guys are a bunch of emo children saying you're playing metal. And I was like, <laughs> excuse me. I was like, you know, two years well, ago, I had super too, long buddy. hair. Yeah. I was like, two years ago, I had super long hair. It's like I, I changed the look, you know, I got the swoop, I had the eyeliner and I wanted to show people how metal we were. And I was like, well, we're going to tap into the, the roots of the roots. We're not mm-hmm. just going to show you like extreme metal and metal core and melodic death metal, but instead we're going to show you where we got our thrash stuff from. And then mm-hmm. city gave me the confidence. I was like, all right, these guys just showed that we can do this too. Um, and then you guys have done it in great fashion. I remember thanks, um, man. you guys did a master of puppets cover when we did uh, something for iron maiden, when we were back in the, back in the day for like, was it Kerrang or metal hammer? Uh, that one was for oh, i have the award up there my kids asking me if i'm done he's like are you done oh wait um, yeah i think i think we well, I think, no I we're good I got, like la- no. last couple minutes we're, yeah. no no we're good man it's, it's I, I i'm loving this um i think we did <laughs> cool. it for it was kerrang master puppets mm-hmm. and then you guys did kerrang maiden yeah we did kerrang maiden because uh, yep. they it was that summer we we were actually oh shoot we were on that kerrang maiden too i forgot yeah i think uh what did you guys do on that one did you do trooper was that you guys or was that somebody else? What did we you guys did do? Iron Maiden, the song Iron Maiden. Okay, okay. And what did we do? We did Flash of the Blade, I think. Yes, and that was okay. 08. And then was that 08? Okay. Puppets was 2005. That's and I think I it's when Metallica. Hearing you guys do the doing the puppets thing. I, I was in was in Europe in one of those European vans or buses. I can't remember at the time. Listening, and we all listened to our peers. You know. You know, you, you you see that they're doing something cool. You want to hear it. You guys fucking killed it, man. Thanks, I remember man. Thank going you like, so much. they sound really good doing this cover. Thank you very much. Yeah, you guys are always super cool to us. I remember when we came out and when Ascendancy first kind of, the only time and place we've ever been a press band was the UK and it was just on Ascendancy. That's where like mm-hmm. every cover, every award, but the rest of the time, like press doesn't talk about us. Mm-hmm. Um, and other bands weren't stoked on us because the first Korean cover we did, we said, I was 18, so I'm allowed to say outlanders things i said we're going to be the next metallica yeah. and so every band we would tour with was just like all right here here's these shitheads and we were bullied and treated like crap by so many of our favorite bands coming up like dude this sucks and then that was another look of one of the reactions that added the fuel to the fire of the crusade so it's like all right i want to show people that we're you know we're not just into what they think is the modern stuff like this comes from a couple lineages before that right which is really interesting but when we were talking about that that was making me go back to we really got to do that modern four. I just don't know. I, I know it's you guys and us. I know it's yeah. you guys and us. And we just got to think who are the other two? <laughs> yeah, we just got to figure that out. But I 1000% I, I agree because I was thinking about it. And when I thought about it, I was like, well, definitely Trivium. And then who else? We got to be able to come up with our big four. Go take this to the sheds in the summertime. Dude, or it would like destroy. That. It would destroy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like it looks like nowadays it's like. It's strength in numbers, but not in the sense that it used to be. Like the touring kind of idea of like Mayhem Ozfest, I think has changed and it's kind of not really there. Yeah. Because I mean they were they were great the eras that we all did them together, but nowadays it seems like people either want to do like a weekend destination festival with like two stages, or they want to do like 
a four band bill in the sheds. It was right. like that Megadeth, Lamb of God, Hate Free Trivium. That was more people than some of the years we did like fest, like rolling festivals, yeah. like a, like a rolling U.S. festival, which was pretty interesting to see that. Because you guys, you guys stayed more. You guys didn't do any warp tours, right? No, that's like the only one we never did. Um, we never did warped here, but we did festivals with those lineups, essentially in like other countries, but never gotcha. here. Gotcha. Yeah, I was just curious because that was that was uh, that was our first rolling festival was warp tour. Then we only did one Ozfest, and then a couple uproars, and then the mayhem we did with you guys. Yep. And uh, who else was on that stage with us? It was, was you it, guys, corn. You guys, corn bullet kill switch, hmm. and then we were closing the Jaeger stage, that tiny rolling stage with the speakers built into a truck, <laughs> and then it was like <laughs> oh, that the twenty Jaeger stage, oh. the twenty minute walk just to find the toilet at main stage and catering because like we were on this Megadeth tour, and so every day we'd be like, holy crap, we did Ozfest here in two thousand five, and our Ozfest, we were one of the bands that played between nine and twelve a.m. Oh, early. So we were like, holy crap, this is so much better than you know playing nine o'clock in the morning and walking 30 minutes to backstage to get catering to walk back. And then yeah. this time we were just there. So it was, it was funny reflecting back that, that that many years ago. I just remember the the, the Jaeger stage and the Jaeger guys out and everybody like at the after parties and stuff. Literated, like yeah. I remember our one of our after parties, like people got pretty screwed up. We did like a jungle juice party that my dad told me about from the military. Where they just buy the cheapest clear liquors possible, fill it into a trash can and cut it with something sweet. So we just buy a bunch of crappy like high c That's or right. hawaiian didn't punch we, di didn't we like trade off on uh after parties like each yes. band hosted a different after yes. party during the tour yes and ours was the jungle juice night and like a bunch of people are like oh you know normally I don't drink but i decided to try this because it's you guys and we're like oh man you really screwed up like i wasn't drinking that stuff that that stuff was disgusting there's a lot of everclear <laughs> in it <laughs> yeah i don't think i drank that either i was like nah i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna drink what i what um, what's yes. on my writer anything out of a hang trash out. can gonna hang out. yeah don't anything worry. out of a trash can should not be consumed <laughs> <laughs> i think it wasn't like the the drummer from black tide wasn't he out there djing most of the parties too was that am i getting the the, the i don't think he was parties? i don't think he was i don't think he was djing and doing that stuff yet on on that run because that was like 20 what freaking tour was that the 2011 that we did it in 2010. I think it might have been that around. early. I think so, because mm -hmm. I didn't blow my voice up till 2013, and then we did a mayhem in 2011. But that was uh, disturbed Godsmack. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to remember when yours when yours was. Maybe yours was 2012. Then it was 2012 it was. or it was 2010. It was one of those two. Maybe it was a different tour later that uh, the Black Tide guys were on, and he was doing DJing because you did it. We did parties on that too. Maybe we did a second mayhem, but I don't know. It's all blurred together. It is. It is blurry. Yeah, it is blurry. <laughs> and we were talking about rolling festivals. We did Ozfest 05. We did Sounds of the Underground. That was like that. It was kind of like a second stage Ozfest like rolling tour. I think three mayhems, two or three mayhems. Nice. And I think that might be it. But I definitely prefer doing like in the states. I prefer doing just like three to four band bill or the weekend festival. I don't like the the touring rolling festival. And I, and I don't see how that is even sustainable anymore. Yeah, like in no, the it doesn't seem like it is. And yeah, mm -mm. It's, yeah. So it's unfortunate. I mean, when you start when you start seeing those festivals drop off and they're not coming back, and then especially after what happened over the last you know nineteen months, like we were talking yeah. about earlier, it just doesn't make sense. Like the protocols and everything that would have to. I mean, there's no. At the end of the day, someone needs to get paid, right? And uh, yep. I don't think they would, I don't think it happens very well at a, on a rolling tour. I mean, yeah, even with like the warp tour, they have a hard cap at how much they'll pay you per show. Mm -hmm. um, no matter how big or small you are, or whatever it's, the, the, you can only get to like I, I want to say it was something like twenty five hundred dollars back in the day, and it, and if you were on the main stage, and it's like, and even Damn, that, man. and even that couldn't sustain over over these over the last twenty years. Oh it, it's man, tough. I've I've talked to a lot of people that know me, and they're like, Matt, you would not have done Warp Tour. <laughs> like, what do you mean? They're like, well, you never know what time you're on stage. Yeah, you might get a shower. The food lines are like punishingly long. There's no yep. dress room. I was like, dude, I I can't do it. <laughs> and I'm too it's, old for it's that. It's very it's very punk rock, dude. Yeah, <laughs> was, too old for that. Those days are lot, done. No, you, yeah, definitely do that when you're real young. Like we yes. like we were. Those were my college years, though. I, yep. I consider I didn't go to college, so I consider those those were my my hard times, my college years where yes. Eating, eating and shitting where you, where you sleep and all yes, that stuff. Like yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, that reminds me. Like, I think right around that time would have been like our van days, like when we would have been on Warp Tour. Yeah, that's that's how we know, did it. Eating Taco Bell once brutal. a day, yeah, and being broke and 
freaking Dude. Denny's sink showers, Waffle House sink showers. Yeah, and then you get to you get to get all excited when you see them golden arches, and you know they yeah. have a dollar menu. You're yep. like, fuck yeah, we're gonna eat good today. Yep, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, man. Jeez, <laughs> good oh, old days. Man. Yeah, the good old days. And now look at us. Uh, you know, these years later. Where is my guitar tech, sir? <laughs> yeah, where's my guitar tech? I don't want to change my strings. I got a house with kids and shit. <laughs> yep. I have this dumb running joke. So like sometimes people pop in the chat and be like, hey, Matt, so I read that net worth thing on you. Like, I don't know where those things come out of. But so then right. I made it this new persona. When people look at my stream room, like, well, what I do is I built a thing that looks like a traditional house's room to make the common man feel OK when they watch me because I'm actually in a two billion dollar estate and i've got my servants walking around my money like like they'll see people with like strollers i'm like oh they're walking my money right now i like to keep it rotating <laughs> that is amazing i love i love that persona and i really hope it happens for you because i want to yeah, see that i want to see <laughs> me that too, me too <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep this room though you yep, exactly keep it, like, yep. it's just <laughs> sitting inside of this palace this modern palace <laughs> <laughs> to make the common folk feel yes. better i love yes. it yes Yep. Uh, last thing I wanted to ask you about, because I did see, I did notice something when I was watching the music video that I don't think I noticed before. You were playing an Epiphone. Have you always yep. been playing Epiphone? Um, so I first played Gibson when I was a kid. I was super lucky. My dad got me a Gibson Les Paul Custom. I still have that one over there when I was like 11, 12, when he saw I was interested in music. Gibson never talked to me because they didn't, they were, weren't really interested in talking to like metal bands or young metal bands, small metal right. bands for years. And it was on the, let me think which record. On in waves, I was invited to the German offices because the German people were the ones that were signing up metal bands and we were doing pretty well there. So they decided to take me on and they said, hey, do you want to, I was talking about signature guitars and I said, I want to make one that's affordable that I get to spec everything out about it. It's the same one that I use, the same one people can buy and start. So I remember being a kid and like looking at my favorite guitar player's guitar, I'm like, oh man, it's only, you know, 800 bucks. And then you pick it up and you're like, oh, this isn't the same one that he plays. Right. So then I was able to make one with Epiphone. It took us about a year. And it was 2013 that we launched it. So we launched my signatures back then. And yeah, so I use 100% my Epiphones on stage, on records. At home, I'm free to use whatever I've got. To, I collect from a bunch of different brands, got a bunch of Gibsons. Right. But I love, love using my Epiphones. The last three records have all been Epiphones, 100% of the rhythm guitars, which is pretty crazy that the quality oh, is yeah. that level now. Yeah, especially, I mean, I know, I know how recording can be and sometimes a certain song requires a certain axe, you know, like it, yep. uh, to, to, to get what you want out of it. And sometimes that means you got to go to the vault and find a 1970s guitar, you know, something, something that was made at the time that you want, that you're trying to depict. Um, and you can't, you can't always use your, your signature on everything. Like I've, yep. I have a signature base with Schecter and I, I, and honestly on some of the studio stuff, I play everything live with the Schecter stuff, but, um, you know, it, it, there's some times when it's just like, this isn't getting the exact sound that we need. Yep. I might have to get this 1972 uh, P bass in here to, to really get this sound that I'm trying to get, you know? Yep, um, absolutely. So that's interesting that, that, that you were able to do all the rhythms on those Epiphones. That's, that's pretty Yeah, pretty I'm sick. really, really lucky. And I was, I was able to use them. They were, they were prototypes at the time, but now they're about to be released uh, Fishman's. So I've got like signature Fishman's and I, I find that every single guitar I put those in, it makes it sound more like me than other pickups. So it's, it's like finding that golden gear. But then, like I said on stream, it's about collecting interesting things. Like I just had an amazing nine string guitar built for me by this builder out of Holland called Red Larry. Nine string, nine string guitar, I'll show it to you. What, 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 are the, what are the natural notes? What is it, what's it tuned to? Holy shit. It goes even lower. Yeah. So it's a bass B. It's a bass B flat if you double tune it. So this is low as a bass is lowest string, but this thing is freaking insane. So this guy builds like two yeah. guitars a year. He built a guitar for me and a guitar for Frederick from Meshuga. And I love it. So I've just been screwing around making weird music with this. Like it's my goal in life to score doom. So I'm doing everything I can to get the next doom. <laughs> they, they don't know that yet, but I'm they don't trying. Know it yet, huh? All right. Well, yeah, we'll, so now we'll, we'll try and get the word out. Uh, Matt, yes. Matt Hafey wants to, wants yes. to score doom. So the whole damn thing. Yep, I don't... The, everyone in your chat, everyone here watching on Drinks with Johnny, make sure you go spam uh, doom and let them know that uh, there's a dude that wants to do it. Yes, because I've, I've wanted to score that since the first one. Uh, actually, in our song off the crusade, Tread the Floods, I reference doom. And I say I'm knee deep in the dead. And that was one of the difficulty levels. So it's like proof that I'm a yeah. geek, geek through and through. 
Yeah, you're, you're, you've been gaming for a while, though. I know that about you. That's That's been something. Since I was about four, four or yeah. five is when I beat the first Mario, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you actually beat the first Mario? I oh, never, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I got to find the picture. I'm on, like, I would always have her take pictures when I beat a game or like film it. So that was like old school, wow. early YouTube Twitch, basically. Yeah, <laughs> I did not know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. Have you seen the Netflix like gamer thing though? You know where they they they, they go back to like the the early nineties when when they had those Nintendo. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, yeah, you got to go check it out. It's really interesting because it's it's the it is like the birth of making it esports. You yeah. know, like like and it's funny because I forgot that they had those competitions and you see like, yeah. these 10, 12 year old kids competing on a Nintendo. You know, and, and insane. a bunch of Nintendos on these shitty little monitors set up like in a, in a big like convention hall you know i love like, it i it's, love it it was really interesting to uh, it was really interesting to watch but um i love that stuff i saw you, to... i saw your kid running around in the back there so oh you uh... saw him out there yeah he, <laughs> <laughs> he got out it got out again but it's it's funny like um i've never seen like natural because i'm not naturally strong i'm not a strong person that's why i do a martial art where you don't have to be strong um but my son is naturally strong like the fact mm-hmm. that he dragged a 25 pound kettlebell when he was like one that's insane but my daughter, I think, is going to be a grappler. Like she will take his back and start to choke him, and it'll take both of us parents to try to pry her little arms off his neck. And he's like, Whoa. "Turn up!" It's scary, but it's also kind of cool. Like, hey, this she's got it built into her. Or she'll like pin him, pin him in side control, and he cannot move her, even though he's significantly stronger. So I think she's going to be a grappler, and I'm very do excited you, about that. Do you grapple with her? Um, I will, I will take like, like fun. Yeah. Obviously. I'll take both of their backs. Like I'll put them in body triangle and hold them really tight. I won't choke them, but I'll start taking yeah. them, tell them to get out. Akira <laughs> just kind of laughs and just like lays there. But Mia actually gets out every single time. Wow. That's and impressive. One of my black belts, uh, one of my guys at my gym would told, told me when your kids are in diapers, teach them about the guard. So when, after I changed their diaper, I'd kind of like teach them about keeping me away with their legs, like showing the concept of guard very early. So hopefully. We'll see if they don't like yeah. it i won't make i won't make them stick with well, it yeah but we don't if they we, do we, don't, we don't force our kids to do anything right you exactly just, the, you give them all the options and yep. say go find something that you enjoy doing that's exactly all, that's, all you, that's your only job exactly <laughs> well, that, keep, that keeping them alive i guess is probably yes the oh, that's, the, that's the hard part man <laughs> that's the hard part <laughs> oh i know that struggle is very real <laughs> yes yes it is well I know that I uh, already took more of your time than uh than was allotted but uh, i really appreciate you being here thanks on the so show much, man. and uh I hope the I hope the guys on uh, your on your stream enjoyed it as well, and uh, <laughs> absolutely yeah. And if you ever start, man, just let let me know if you ever have any questions. But I think you just doing exactly what you're doing, and just like talking your chat before and after, after good yeah. to go. Yeah, I think that would just be the idea. Double up, yeah, and then you just upload the final content onto your stuff. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I, I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to finish out this season though, and then take I always take a I always take a holiday break through the through the holidays, and then start filming again in January, and then release in February. So that I, cause I, this is a fun gig for me. This isn't like, I'm not making any money on this. This is just fun for me to do. Yeah. It's amazing. So, and I love it. I love it. It was yeah. an awesome chat, man. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate your time. Uh, go ahead and email me through, uh, through Tim and then we can yeah, change yeah. numbers. Okay. Are you with sound talent? I am. Awesome. Yeah. Cause um, I was curious about, I was curious about how you like them because I was thinking about maybe doing something with them someday. They, yeah. Assume. They've been good. They've been good. I mean, you just. It's easy. <laughs> they they have yeah. they have everything automatically set up for you. Damn. You just upload the stuff. It's it's they, they make it really easy on you. That's amazing. That's amazing. Awesome, yeah, man. man. Yeah, yeah. Please stay in touch. Uh, let's, let's trade contacts and all that. And heck yeah, yes. Better. All right, all right man. my friend. Thank you so have much. Have a good one. Cheers. All right, take care, man. See you later. And that'll just about do it for this week's episode of Drinks with Johnny. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for uh, <laughs> tuning in while I had a, a a chat with an old friend. It felt really good to do that again. Um, make sure you guys are subscribing, all that, all that stuff. And if you, if you remember to go listen to the podcast when you're out and about doing your thing, subscribe there as well. Head over to drinkswithjohnny.com, if easy enough for me to say, uh, and you can get some merch there. Show your support of the show and sign up to become a filthy animal, where you get exclusive content early and ad free as well. And uh, with that, with that being said, until next time, as always, cheers.